Hello, David Harper of the Bionic Turtle and a quick discussion on how to use GARCH11 to forecast future volatility. In rainbow here I've got the GARCH11 formula and so we can see it's sigma squared. Sigma squared is the variance so generally we'll be talking about variance here and remember at the end of everything we if we want the volatility we need to take a square root of that. The variance under the GARCH11 model is a function of three terms and that is the long run variance, the lagged squared return, so that would be if we're talking if n is today then u of n minus 1 would be yesterday's re periodic return and we square that and then we have a lagged variance so in that case that would be yesterday's variance and so we've got those three factors long run variance lagged return lagged variance and then we need to weight them and that's the point of the Greek letters the weights do need to sum to one so we've got gamma alpha and beta gamma plus alpha plus beta needs to equal one so to illustrate this I made up some assumptions long run variance of one percent so I'm saying that for our time series the variance is going to be sticky toward 1%. And then I've got the weights for this GARCH specification, and they do need to sum to 1, so I've got that. And then I've got a GARCH11 estimate for today's variance, so to speak. And I just made up some numbers here. This could be a stock, for example that on day n minus two that would be two days ago was seven dollars then yesterday was eight dollars such that the periodic return was thirteen point percent and change and then we square the periodic return and then I've got yesterday's variance which I also just made up for to illustrate and then I get to today which is n and I get to use the GARCH11 there which is 1.41 percent and so that is this cell right here if we take a look at this we'll see all that I've done here is implement this rain, this function in rainbow here I'm gonna have the lo the long run variance of 1 percent multiplied by the weight that I assigned to it which is 30 percent the gamma and then I'm gonna have the alpha weight that's in green multiplied by the la yesterday's return squared that's the green number finally I'm going to add beta which is the weight assigned to yesterday's variance so that beta is the weight multiplied by yesterday's variance so all I'm doing there is adding up three factors that are each weighted by alpha beta and gamma and that gets me the GARCH11 estimate for today, where today is N. And so you can see it's 1.41% is the estimate of my variance today. Now, to predict or forecast with the GARCH11 model, I'm not going to show you the math, but the math is really, the algebra is pretty straightforward that gets us from this specification of today's variance. We can rearrange terms to produce this formula in orange which says that the expected variance on day n plus t so that's today plus t days forward is a function of this right here which is the long run variance plus alpha plus beta those are two of my Greek parameters raised to the t power multiplied by this uh, parenthetical here which is the difference between today's variance and the long run variance so this term right here just think of this is this is how far today we have a variance how far is that variance from the long run variance the larger that is the more we have to go to get to the long run variance and it's going to be multiplied by this here alpha plus beta is the persistence of the series and the greater this value is the more persistent the series is and that means that it has a greater tendency to stick to today's variance and less of a tendency to decay 
toward the long run variance. So alpha plus beta has got to be less less than one. We know that because all of the weights have to be less than one. But the closer it is, you can see that the alpha, this alpha plus beta gets raised to a t number of days. So here's the key parameter. It gets raised to a power that controls the persistence or decay of the series. So f I've got these examples in here. So again, for example, I've got gamma of 30%, alpha and beta of 20 and 50%. So my alpha plus beta is 70%, and that means my persistence is 70%. So my series is going to have a 70% sort of tendency to stick. So let's go to day n plus 1. So this would be tomorrow, so to speak. And we can see, I'll show you the formula here. I've used some range names to make this easier, but all I've done is implement that formula. I said the long run average plus alpha plus beta raised to the t power, where t is the number of days forward, multiplied by here this difference between today's variance and the long run average. So all that formula is right here is the same formula in orange and then I'm able to copy it down and then for our purposes it's probably easier just to look at the uh, line plot here where n plus 1 is this 1.28 percent and so you can see the forecast with the Garch 1 1 is starting at 1.28 percent and then here is an illustration of the mean reversion I have a long run variance of 1% and so that's this line here and you can see my forecast of volatility is converging toward that 1%. Now the the persistence here is 70% alpha plus beta. Let me just change gamma which is the weight assigned to the long run variance to 10%. That raises my persistence so now my alpha plus beta is 90% and you can see this line does not decay as quickly. It is more persistent to the 1.5%, which is my current variance. And it has less decay. Now let me change the gamma to, to something just outrageous, 60%. Unrealistic. Now my alpha plus beta is only 4%, so I have a lower persistence and greater decay. And notice my series is is snapping that gravitational pull right down to the one percent and then it's going to hit one percent pretty quickly so that's the implementation of this uh, formula for the forecast of the variance again only under the Garch 1-1 model so I hope that was helpful this is David Harper the Bionic Turtle thanks for your time